I'll just briefly recap where we uh, left off uh, the last time we were here, which was um, after the uh, Launch Minus Two Mission Management Team meeting on the 1st to review our uh, readiness to head into this launch attempt. If you recall, the uh, Launch Operations Team out of the Launch Control Center stayed in the launch countdown uh, following the attempt on Monday, and that gave us a head start headed into today's attempt. Uh, the uh, the team, when we came in for the uh, tanking meeting, which was to decide whether or not to load the vehicle with uh, the cryogenic fuel and oxidizer today, was uh, on the timeline or slightly ahead, and uh, it was a clean meeting. Uh, we met at uh, 04.45 uh, this morning, and uh, we talked about our setup for the day, and uh, there were a few, excuse me, uh, there were a few items that we talked about, uh, uh, but most of those were uh, of no particular uh, constraint relative to uh, setting up for our launch attempt. Uh, the team uh, identified that they had 46 collision avoidance cutouts in the in the launch window. Most were a minute uh, or, or uh, I'm sorry, most were just a few seconds. The longest ones were about a minute. Uh, we do have uh, at this particular time of year a uh, high propellant bulk temperature uh, which uh, gives us more performance out of the rocket. So essentially we have a hot rocket in terms of the uh, performance um, to launch and that actually uh, as we fly up through the Earth's atmosphere uh, pushes the uh, higher end of the maximum dynamic pressure or Q-bar. And we uh, saw that we had positive margins but uh, lower margins on one specific area on the Orion spacecraft and we were watching that. Uh, the vehicle was expected to get to about 700 pounds per square foot of uh, pressure as it headed up through the, uh, the period of maximum dynamic pressure. Uh, just prior to the uh, cryogenic loading operation, the, the team was working through a chill down, and uh, the, um, there was an inadvertent uh, pressurization of the hydrogen transfer line that the uh, pressure uh, exceeded what we, what we had planned, which was about 20 pounds per square inch. It, it got up to about 60 pounds per square inch. And uh, the flight hardware itself we know is, is fine. Uh, we did not exceed the uh, uh, maximum uh, design pressure, uh, but uh, there's a chance that the, um, that the soft goods or the, uh, the uh, seal in the quick disconnect at the 8-inch uh, quick disconnect um, saw some effects from that, but it's too early to tell exactly uh, whether that was the cause of the, uh, the hydrogen leak that we had today. What we do know is that we saw a large leak at the 8-inch quick disconnect today, and um, that uh, leak started when we went from the slow fill to the fast fill. Uh, this particular quick disconnect did not have a problem uh, of this magnitude on Monday. We did see a small leak, but we did not see one of this magnitude. It was, it was uh, characterized as a large leak by our, by our operations team. Uh, the team tried three times to resolve the leak, and all three times we saw a large leak. Um, and, and as was discussed previously, if, if you can thermally stabilize both sides of that quick disconnect, we have a ground side and a flight side, and that is where the fluid flow occurs through. If you can chill that down and, and ensure that there's no differential um, temperature across that interface, sometimes the leaks can seal themselves or, or heal themselves. So the team attempted that. They attempted to um, essentially reseat the leak by, by um, increasing the pressure in there. And, and that was, uh, was uh, not successful. Uh, so initially the team uh, declared the scrub at 1117 uh, Eastern time and then went into vehicle safing and, and drained the cryo. Um, the liquid oxygen is currently off the vehicle and uh, the liquid hydrogen, at least when we were in the mission management team meeting, was still on board the vehicle and they were in the process of draining it. It should be off by now or very close to it. The team will get into what they call the inerting, which is they put um, uh, gaseous nitrogen in there uh, so as not to condense uh, water vapor in the, uh, in the tank area, and then uh, they'll, they'll swap over to air. What that does is it allows us to get the, the tanks back up to ambient uh, conditions and then for us to gain access. Uh, in the uh, scrub meeting that we had at, uh, at uh, 2.30 Eastern, we talked about three options. The first option was to uh, simply demate and remate the umbilical at the pad, hoping that the uh, soft goods would seal the leak up. But our confidence level, given 
the size of the leak that we saw today was fairly low, that that would solve the problem. Uh, the team uh, leaned towards a, um, a uh, removal and replacement of the soft goods in the quick disconnect, and the options were basically to do it at the pad or do it uh, back in the vehicle assembly building. And either of those options do not preserve our ability to fly uh, before the end of this launch period, which expires on the 6th. So uh, the team is developing a series of schedule options, and we're going to hear about those early next week. Uh, the schedule options include uh, removal and replacement of the, um, the soft goods on the, on the quick disconnect at the pad, followed by a uh, cryo test. That is the only place we can get a full cryo test to ensure that we do not have uh, the uh, uh, a further issue with respect to leaks at the uh, at the temperatures that we need to fill the vehicle on day of launch. Uh, the other option is to roll back and re remove and replace the um, the um, quick disconnect uh, uh, soft goods in the vehicle assembly building. Uh, there's a risk versus risk trade. Doing it at the pad, you're exposed to the environmental conditions, and we need to build an environmental enclosure to do that. If we do it in the vehicle assembly building, the vehicle assembly building is the environmental enclosure. Uh, however, we cannot test this uh, quick disconnect at, in the VAB at cryogenic temperatures. We can only do it at ambient temperatures. So we're, we're working through those options. Uh, the team, uh, it's, it's too early to say, but they're working through a fault tree analysis as to why we did not see a leak of this magnitude on Monday, but we're seeing it um, uh, of, of this magnitude at today's attempt. And uh, they're also looking at the uh, chill down procedure uh, to uh, look at additional uh, controls such that we don't have a reoccurrence of the, uh, of the um, inadvertent overpressure that we had earlier today. So all that said, we've talked about it before. This is an incredibly hard business. This is an initial test flight of this vehicle. As was said by uh, Administrator Nelson, we're going to fly when we're ready. And uh, as part of this initial test flight, we're learning the vehicle. We're learning how to operate the vehicle, and we are learning um, all of the things required to get us ready to fly. And uh, we've demonstrated a large number of those things, uh, not only through wet dress and some of the other uh, ground tests that we've had, but uh, we, we are still learning as we go, again, to get this vehicle off safely. So our focus is on uh, understanding the problem, developing solutions uh, in terms of schedule, but also risk versus risk impacts, and we'll follow up um, next week when we, when we have those options uh, fleshed out further. So with that, I'll pass it back to Jackie.